Hello, it's Don Michelle from Boho Tiro, and today I have another new deck to share with you. This one is the Talzima, which I may be mispronouncing, Tarot by Tara Cochran. Now, this is a deck that the creator did send to me for review to check out, and I wanted to kind of just go through and do my usual process with you. We'll kind of just take a look at it, check it out, um, read a little bit from the guidebook. This is a collage deck, which I have been quite into these days. Um, again, it's an indie deck and it comes in this beautiful magnetic box, which is wonderful. And you can see here, we have a lovely little guidebook inside, which has just our basic meanings, no uh, pictures of the cards, but that's okay. And I, think these cards, look at these backs, these are amazing. Um, I have seen, or I've peeked at the uh, cards on her website. So I, while I haven't gone through the deck, I am kind of aware of what the deck looks like on the whole. And it's a collage deck, which I've been really quite into these days. So I'll just read a little bit from her guidebook. So she does have a quote here in the beginning, which might give us a little bit of an idea about the meaning behind the title. It says the source of energy in the cosmos is none other than the sun, the incessant generator of universal strength called by many different names, Talisma, from the Emerald Table, Archers or Vital Force or Spirit of the World. The solidification of its light has formed the bodies and materials that make up the side real universe. It is the sun that keeps things alive. The sun's energy emanating from it constantly vivifies the creatures of the universe. And that is from A History of Alchemy, 1962. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of where the um, where the name came from. It says about the art, all the images on the cards are handmade collage. I created them by cutting pictures out of old magazines and book with scissors and affixing them to paper with a glue stick. Now I have really come around to liking um, hand cut collage. And that's definitely something that has not always been the case for me. So I definitely am curious to take a look at this particular deck. So these are actually quite large cards. And I just want to point that out because this is the Deviant Moon Borderless Edition. So you can see there is quite a bit of difference in the size. They are closer to Oracle size than they are Tarot. So it does make it quite a handful in terms of the size of the deck. This title card is really cool. I love, again, hand cut collage. That's something that I've really been enjoying lately. And let's take a closer peek at the back, which I think is quite beautiful. And here's another title card, which again is beautiful. Being that this is hand cut collage work, I think she did an amazing job, better than I probably ever could have. So here we have the fool. Again, you can see the figure is kind of walking in space. It's, it feels a little bit like a darker moon child. Here's the magician. I love the colors in this deck. Here we have the high priestess. Again, hand cut collage. So like she had to cut out her hand and put this little moon paper in there. And it's just really interesting how the, um, how the images all come together. It's the Empress. That looks like perhaps maybe it's a statue, which is quite interesting. Here we have the Emperor. Lots of fire energy in this card, which I, I'm all about, so that's really cool. I do quite like that for the Emperor. Here we have the Hierophant, which again, I love the colors in this deck. And I love the big, the big macaws. I'm actually terrified of huge birds, but I think they're absolutely stunning. And I love the mask there, that's great. Um, so here we have the lovers. Look at all the different hands coming together. We have the figure here. It's just, and, and the layers and the colors, and yeah, I'm, I'm actually kind of loving that. So the chariot card, this is awesome. The kind of like being on the bones of like all your ancestors. I haven't read the guidebook, so I'm just totally going off like intuition here, What what's what's coming to me, but this to me feels like moving forward from a place of ancestral healing, which I think is fabulous. 
I love the dark energy of this deck. So here we have Justice. Again, there's so much going on in these cards. Like we have the old TV, this um, Statue of Justice. We have two figures here. We have some motorcycles, some trailers, some lightning coming down. Like there is just, there's a whole lot going on in these cards. This Hermit is so interesting. So we have this almost like pyramid temple thing in the midst of all of the mountains, kind of really this idea about going going inward, going to your inner temple. Although, is that a GM car key? I feel like I need to like get a magnifying glass because again, there's so much going on in this deck. It's, it's actually super cool. So here we have fortune. It's definitely kind of tying into that idea of fortune in terms of, you know, maybe a little bit of lady luck there. I do like the um, black and white sphere behind the hand. I think that's quite cool. Here we have force. So I didn't even, I wasn't even paying attention. So we had justice at eight and strength or force at 11, which is actually my preference. So that's actually quite cool. Again, look at, look at all this imagery. Look at all the colors. Like the colors in this deck are amazing. Here we have the hanged man. There's a bat and a guy hanging upside down and a flower blooming. And like, I can't even tell what all is going on. Like I need to get closer, but it's super interesting. This death card is pretty amazing. There again, so much going on in these cards. This is a deck that I think you could do really powerful small readings with just one single card. And I do feel like this is a more thought based deck. I mean, we had force and now we have art instead of temperance, which is quite interesting. So perhaps this might be more of a thought based deck. I haven't even looked through. I haven't looked through it to be able to tell you we're doing this together. So here we have the devil. Um, there is nudity in this deck. I probably should have mentioned that from the get go. But yeah, lots again, just lots of interesting things going on. So much to dive into. Okay, so here we have the tower. I almost don't even know where to look because there's so much going on. And I don't necessarily mean that in a bad way. It just mean that like, I feel like this is a deck that you would really need to kind of take your time and sink into. Interesting star card. We have all this kind of this gem work and this energy light show thing kind of going on. We have water. Um, we have the figure who is, of course, naked, and she looks like her feet are on some kind of marine life here, which is quite interesting. So here we have the moon. It's beautiful. So instead of the wolves, we have these two figures here. We have this um, kind of Egyptian scarab looking thing. This looks like <laughs> she's from Vegas. Um, but again, super cool, super cool. Here we have the sun, no naked babies here. Just that beautiful kind of fiery Egyptian energy, which is quite lovely. We have the Last Judgment. That is a powerful card. Definitely tapping into that Phoenix energy, which is quite lovely for the Judgment card. But that's that's definitely one that'll that'll poke at you, right? Again, lots of things going on. I do like that we have the central figure, and then we kind of have things going on in the four corners. But it's just a lot of layers, a lot of texture, a lot of imagery kind of just that whole hodgepodge of things coming together to create the world, which I think is kind of lovely. Okay, so here we have the Ace of Wands, definitely tapping into that fire energy. We do have the element at the top and of course the titles at the bottom. So here's our Two of Wands, again, pulling in a little bit of that Egyptian theme. This deck is fascinating. Some really interesting things that have been done with the, the collage work in this deck. I'm just kind of fascinated by. Here we have the Three of Wands. Oh my goodness, there's a lot going on in this card. Again, just, wow, so much going on. Look at this Four of Wands. It's quite beautiful. All right, kind of getting lost in the artwork, <laughs> which is kind of the point. This Five of 
<laughs> wands kind of, this five of wands makes me laugh. Look at, I mean, they're like riding the little animal there and he's got a fox head and this person's got a um, skull for a head and there's like, I don't know, something erupting in the background. I mean, it's definitely a card of kind of chaos and disruption, but it's, it's kind of cool actually. Here we have the six of wands. Again, lots of interesting things going on in this deck. Lots of interesting symbology. We have the cat who's eaten, the big cat that's eaten the, the deer there, which is on the head of the person who's holding a dollar. I mean, there's just so much, so much going on there. So much depth actually in this deck. Here's our seven of wands, rock star energy. Interesting. So we have, you know, the guitar, all the hands here, kind of that idea of adoration in this card a little bit, but a lot of creative fire as well. And this eight of wands, it's quite a beautiful card. Lots of movement. Oh, I love this Nine of Wands. This is really cool. Like we do have kind of the, the disembodied head thing going on, but like this person has a mask. Fall down here with all these different ideas of performance and technology and priority, it looks like maybe so interesting. A lot of dynamic energy in that card. Here we have our Ten of Wands, it's beautiful. I love the colors in this deck. And I love that we kind of get the idea of burden if you read it that way and kind of that carrying that heavy load. We also have a cheetah, so that idea that you can still move forward with this, right? It's not, it's not the end. I kind of love that. Here we have the Princess of Wands. So again, this feels very much in the Thoth realm, which is kind of cool. Here we have our Knight of Wands, although we have kings, so instead of um, knights being the end of the court, we have the, the kings. Interesting knight of wands, lots of energy and movement there. Beautiful queen of wands. She's quite stunning. Look at all the figures kind of in devotion. That's, that's quite awesome. Here we have our king of wands. I mean, I feel like I would have to do like a nine hour video to even dive into all of the, <laughs> the symbols in these cards. We'd be here forever because there is a lot going on in this deck. Here we have the ace of cups. Quite interesting. The two of cups. I have a hint of romance down here. It's lovely. Three of cups. I feel like a deck like this really is just open to interpretation. Like however you read the tarot, I think you could find something in this deck that you could relate to. The Four of Cups, I love this idea of kind of just settling into it, resting, emotional rest. We have the Five of Cups. So we have, you know, the crucifixion here. We have um, what looks like a funeral. And then over here, we look what looks like a wedding. It's interesting. Here we have the Six of Cups. Love the hummingbirds, the big rose. The Seven of Cups. You can see all the kind of different energies reflected around. Quite interesting. The Eight of Cups. I love that. It's actually quite powerful. I really like that Eight of Cups. <laughs> There's a hint of a coffee cup down here. Quite interesting. Here we have the Nine of Cups. Lots of emotional contentment, a lot of joy in this card. It's beautiful. You can see joy here, but this looks more like contentment, ecstasy. Not sure what he's doing, but you know, lots, lots of emotional fulfillment in that card. Here we have the Ten of Cups. So much to look at, so much to look at, but so cool. Princess of Cups. I love this one. Look at how all the colors come together. Pinks and the purples and the blacks with those pops of the pearlescent white. That's stunning. The Knight of Cups. She does color very well in her collage. It's our Queen of Cups. Interesting that we have the cat and the dolphin. Our King of Cups being crowned. Here we have our Ace of Swords, moving into our sword suit. I do like she, that she has the elemental symbols up there. <laughs> the sword is coming out of the head. 
That looks like the head of Medusa, maybe. Or not. Can't tell, but it's pretty cool. Here we have the Two of Swords with the cartoon figures. That just kind of makes me laugh. It kind of gives me the idea of like, yeah, you don't really know what you're doing right now, but it's cool. You'll figure it out, right? You'll figure it out. The Three of Swords. We do have, we have a heart and we have three swords. So if you read the Three of Swords that way, it's there for you. But I love that it's not locked into that interpretation. So I think that's quite awesome. Here we have the Four of Swords. Love that, doing the, raking the sand around. It's beautiful. It's movement, energy, quite interesting. Oh my, the Five of Swords. The Fives are very disruptive in this deck, which is awesome. I love for my Fives to be super disruptive because I think that that is kind of the energy that kind of shakes us out of the mundane, gets us moving again on our path. And I think that this is really cool. Here we have our Six of Swords kind of retro feel to that card, which is kind of awesome. Seven of Swords, kind of dig that one too. It's a bit weird, a bit weird. Oh, the big snake and the Eight of Swords. Well, oh, that's a hard one for me. That's a hard one, but, because it looks like it's like actually biting into her back. So yeah, that's an interesting one. Nine of Swords, that's a bit of a hard one, but it's definitely a kind of, you know, nightmarish anxiety inducing card so it serves its purpose well like i feel like there's some serious shadow in this deck we have the ten of swords and we do have a person who is bound with a sword through through them i mean i think there's a lot there's a lot going on in that here we have our princess of swords our knight of swords i like the eagle great again with the colors our Queen of Swords. That is an interesting image. Interesting. The King of Swords. I like the skulls. That's really cool. All right, moving into our suit of pentacles or coins in this case. We have the Ace of Coins. Really interesting too. Again, lots of snakes, lots of snakes. I like that they're kind of like standing on top of the world. Interesting. So our three of coins. And our four. That's pretty cool. Our five of coins. That's quite an interesting card. I like the symbolism in that one. Kind of disrupting the status quo. Look at this. This is the status quo. Disrupt that energy, that's awesome. Here we have our six of coins. Again, a lot going on in these cards. Here's our seven. I love the colors in that. That's beautiful. I love the, the stone figure in the background as well. The eight of coins. Very busy card, very busy. But they're all like kind of like working at their craft. You know, painting, carving, looks like maybe welding or something here. Very interesting. It's a nine of coins. <laughs> that's quite a, it's quite a nice little card for the nine of coins. I like it. Here we have our ten of coins, big house. We don't see our traditional family, but we definitely get the idea of kind of affluence there. The princess of coins. There's a lot going on in that image. I love this stone figure here. The Knight of Coins. The bird eating the fish. Oh! The Queen of Coins. Very earthy, which is very cool. I like that earthy energy to it. And the King of Coins. He's quite interesting, isn't he? Still has that earthy bent to it. So that's a look at the cards in the deck. And oh my goodness, there's there's a lot going on in this deck. And I feel like this deck is like the shadow version of the moon child or the shadow version of the lioness oracle. Um, 
it probably feels more in the lioness oracle space than the than the moon child to be perfectly honest because it feels very grounded it does not feel up in the the stars up in the the cosmos it feels very grounded in the world that we are living in today and i feel like there's a lot of there's a lot of depth that i think could come up from this deck which is really quite interesting um it's and I think the collage work is is quite fascinating. I I can't even like I don't even think a walkthrough, just a general walkthrough, would really even do this deck justice because you just don't have time to really sink into what's going on in these images. So while I did just want to kind of go through it and share it with you, I I really do feel like this is one of those decks that I really need to work with. Um, it is gold gilded, which as you know is not my favorite, and it's quite large. Here's the backs again. Um, I don't think, yeah, I can't get my hand around it to shuffle it that way. So we'll see if we can do a side shuffle because I do just kind of want to pull a couple cards. I don't think this is going to side shuffle either, to be perfectly honest. Um, but I think, yeah, <laughs> it's not really going to side shuffle either. I think that um, in a deck like this with so much going on in the artwork if it if it was any smaller if it was tarot size i don't think that would work my hands are just entirely too small but if i half it i can side shuffle it a little bit better so so i do just kind of want to give it a little shuffle and this is this is how i shuffle a deck that is too large for me to get my hands around um this is how i work with my star child my moon child uh, my lioness because I do like to riffle shuffle it is a part of my reading process or ritual if you will um, I don't think I'm gonna be able to like overhand the whole deck at once but those backs those backs are just kind of awesome. If you like collage decks, this this is a fascinating collage deck. This to me kind of feels like a little in the Voyager tarot space, although I'm just, just based on what I've seen because I do not own that deck and I have not worked with this one yet. So I'm just kind of guessing, but it feels like it kind of occupies that, that same space. Um, let's just put a couple cards down because I really want to see what comes through. Um, when we look at at a three card reading, which I think would be plenty with this deck, that death card, there's something about it. I love it. Love the colors. So we have the death, the nine of cups and the eight of swords. Let's just go ahead and, and dip into her guidebook and take a look at what um, she has to say about these two cards or these three cards. So um, she just kind of has keywords. So death is the child of the great transformers in the sign of Scorpio. It says one door closing, another opening, natural endings which make way for new beginnings, transformation, contemplating everything, metamorphosis, letting go, decay. I love that. It's just a list of kind of key phrases which I think works really well. Um, especially with a deck like this where it is a bit more I think of an intuitive reader I think that this is uh, probably not a deck for beginners unless you just want to wholeheartedly dive into um, intuitive reading and just let whatever comes to mind so we have the nine of cups lord of material happiness happiness jupiter in pisces your wishes granted your wildest dreams come true miraculous healing surprise delights and then the Eight of Swords is Lord of Short-Sighted Force, Interference, Jupiter in Gemini with obstacles, stall progress, uh, limited thinking, unreward, unrewarded effort, technical difficulties. Feels kind of, okay, it feels a little thothy. Again, okay, let's take a look at, at the, the three cards that I have on the table because I think that when I'm working with a deck like this where there is just so much going on in the artwork for one i three cards is about the limit but i think cards like this and decks like this are really great for deep contemplation so when i'm working with a deck like this what i do is i just kind of look at what what am i seeing across these three cards that's really drawing my attention i see a butterfly a butterfly and a snake all of those things all three of those things speak to me of transformation right 
um, the butterfly transforms from the caterpillar into, into the new being. The snake sheds its skin and renews itself. So in this message and in this artwork, if we're just kind of looking at it from an intuitive standpoint, what this message is, is telling me is that transformation that's going to come from the death of whatever it is that I'm trying to leave behind. And I think that's beautiful. A butterfly for death and a butterfly for the Nine of Cups. You know, we have that idea of a transformation and metamorphosis in the death card through that butterfly. And here we have that idea of almost ecstasy through this butterfly. So this transformation, this metamorphosis from this death experience is going to bring ecstasy and it's going to allow us to shed what no longer serves us and move on to a new way of being, a new way of thinking, perhaps as we're looking at the Eight of Swords here. We're going to move on from a limiting belief that we've maybe that's maybe held us back and that is going to bring this transformation. So when I'm looking this, I'm I'm seeing that the message that's coming through is that, you know, that metamorphosis is going to bring ecstasy, which is going to allow me to release the things that are no longer serving me. I mean, I think that's just powerful. I really, really quite like that. Um, I kind of want to do one more just, just for fun because we're just playing here. And I think that this deck has a lot of really interesting things going on and I know I'm not going to be able to do it justice. Here we have the Queen of Cups, the Six of Swords, and the Empress. So what am I seeing across these three cards? What's really standing out to me is actually the cat, the cup, and the statue. So what does that tell me? Cat is very, very much in tune with what it is that they need right now. And if that doesn't, you know, work for you, then that that's kind of too bad. And I think that is a very Queen of Cups energy where, you know, we have to know our own our own heart. And this Six of Swords here with the, the cup of coffee is telling me you kind of have to know your own heart in order to kind of fill that cup, right? I'm just kind of curious what she has for the Six of Swords. Um, so for the Six of Swords, she has Lord of Earned Success, Science, Mercury and Aquarius, uh, Rite of Passage, Liberation, Confluence of Heart and Mind. I love that. So really this idea of you got to be in, in your own space. You got to own your heart space in order to fill that cup up, in order to, to move into that Empress energy, which for me speaks very much of, of being at home in your environment as we see kind of in this image here. And that's kind of like just that quick intuitive that's coming to me through these cards. Again, I think this is a deck that if you are looking to kind of break into intuitive readings or, or that is a preferred style of reading for you, I think this deck would be excellent for that because it's definitely one that I think is going to encourage you to um, really look at uh, what you're seeing in, in the imagery. I think it'd be a great deck for contemplation for really just sitting with one image or maybe just three images and what's popping out or really diving deep into just one image of what, what can I see in here? What can I find? What's speaking to me in the moment? And one of the things that I really love about a deck like this is that a deck with so much going on like this, something different will spark my intuition each time I pull a card. So if I get the nine of, Knight of Wands this time, maybe it's this big red light that speaks to me. And in another pull, it's going to be the kind of um, pins going through the mouth there. So every time I work with a deck like this, and one of the reasons why I've, I really have been enjoying working with collage decks a lot more than I had previously in the past, and I've really come around to appreciating what they have to offer in terms of layers and layers and layers of meaning that change every time I work with the card. And every time I see the image, you know, something new pops out. So here's that nine of cups we looked at just a minute ago. Maybe this time what I'm looking at is the fountain. And what does that say to me right now? Because that's going to signify something different going on for me in this moment than whatever was going on when the last time I interacted with this card and I was tapped into that butterfly energy. 
So I think that's quite beautiful. Um, it is strange. It is weird. And there's some stuff in here that I'm like, I don't quite know what to make of that yet. But again, it's something that I'm going to have to sit with. And I'm going to have to work through. And I still feel like this deck is kind of nudging toward the... I, this lover's card is amazing. I love it. Um, it's still kind of nudging me toward... I feel like some shadowy things could be cultivated from this, from this deck. Like good healing shadowy work. Good shadow healing work um, I feel like could be cultivated from this deck although I don't really work with shadow energy in that sense um, I have a little bit of a different interpretation of it I don't have my glasses on so I can't tell if that's like a GM key but kind of feels like it anyway I forget what I was saying because I actually had to pause and sneeze <laughs> but um yeah I I think that this deck is pretty dang cool I'm kind of excited to dive into it again I think some three card three card readings. I feel like this would almost be a good like new moon energy deck because I feel like there is a lot of stuff that could kind of provoke some some new new thoughts and new ideas within it. So um, it's a beautiful mat too. I don't think I mentioned that, but um, I really do quite like it. I'm going to put the extra cards in the bottom as I normally do um, with the little guidebook, although I really feel like this is a deck that, that I would work with very intuitively. Um, because I can't, it's so large, I can't shuffle it. The gilding really doesn't bother me, um, but I might, I might end up, you know, doing a little trim on it. Although I don't think that this is a deck that I'd want to take borderless because I feel like borderless um, it would cause some chaos on my table, to be perfectly honest. I feel like this is one of those deck that decks that needs borders, and um, that I think that it was a good choice to include them. I love the elemental symbols, and this is one of my favorite cards that I think we've come across. I love this card. I think it's beautiful. Anyway, that is in these backs. Aren't these bags just stunning? So there you go. That is a little walk through the Talisma, if I'm saying that right, tarot. Um, I will leave a link for you to find out more about this deck in the description box below for you. I want to thank Tara for sending me this deck to share with you today. I am definitely looking forward to working with it and getting to know it a little bit better and hopefully I'll be able to share in the future what my experience has been in terms of actually working with the deck but just giving it a quick look through. I think it's going to be a really interesting one for some deep dive work for sure. As always my friends thank you so much for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you again soon in another video.